Hey everyone, I am finally back in action and today I'm bringing you a simple day and night cycle tutorial for your open world projects. Here is a quick look at the finished product where you can see we're blending two skyboxes using a shader. This is a really simple beginner friendly tutorial I'm going to build off of for a better day and night system in the future, but let's start on the easy side and jump into Unity. Okay, so we're in Unity with a template project. If you guys are interested in getting this demo, this is from my open world tutorial series. I'll put a link in the description below for it. If you don't have this demo, it's totally fine. You can do the tutorial without it. So you can see we already have a skybox. If you want some free skyboxes, I'd recommend getting this fantasy skybox free asset from the Unity Asset Store. Just add it to your assets, then go to your Unity project, select Window, Package Manager. Make sure you select My Assets, then search for Fantasy, and it should pop right up on the left. After that, just download it, then import it. Okay, so we're gonna use something called Shader Graph to create our day and night cycle. If you've never used it before, remember we have to install it. So let's go back to the package manager. This time select the Unity Registry tab, then search for Shader and Shader Graph will pop up. We can now go ahead and install it. Let's finally do some work in our scene. Let's grab the Lighting tab by going to Windows, Rendering, Lighting, then dock it next to the inspector. Now click the Lighting tab and select the Environment tab. The key element here is the Skybox material. You can see I already have mine set to a material, but let's swap it into one that came with the Fantasy Skybox free assets. There's a bunch of different ones, including day and night skyboxes. We can take a look at an example of a day skybox real quick. And now let's switch it to a night skybox. Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to blend between two different skyboxes like this using a shader. It's actually pretty easy. I'm going to create a folder named Shaders, then right click that folder and create a new shader graph. If you don't have this option, make sure you've installed shader graph from the package manager. Also, just a quick note, I'm using the built-in render pipeline, so I selected a built-in unlit shader graph. If you're using URP, you can just make a URP unlit shader graph instead. I'm going to name this shader graph Skybox Blender, and now we can double click it to open shader graph. Then double click the shader graph tab to full screen it. So I'm just organizing things here a bit, but if you haven't used Shader Graph before, it's a bit like visual scripting. The first thing we need to do is create two parameters for our skyboxes. To do this in Shader Graph, we create two parameters of type cube map. Note that if your skyboxes aren't cube maps, this method is not going to work for you. So I named them cube map day and cube map night. Now we can drag them onto our workspace, then drag and release the node on the cube map to create a new node. Unity is now suggesting two different types of nodes. We're going to select the second option, sample reflected cube map. Now let's do the same thing for the other cube map. We can now assign our cube map to a skybox in our project. Click on the cube map property, select node settings in the graph inspector, and then change the default field to the skybox that you want. I'm going to choose this FS000 Day 6 Sunless for the first one, and then I'm just going to select a Night Skybox for the second property. And awesome! So now we can see the material preview of our skyboxes, so we know it's working. Okay, so we're going to do one more step before we test things out. Create a new Lerp node and attach the Day and Night nodes to the A and B inputs. The Lerp node interpolates between two values smoothly, but to interpolate over time, we actually need to add in a time input node. Create a new time node and connect the sign time output to the T input on the lerp node. Okay, and great, we can now see the material preview lerping between the two textures. The very last thing we need to do is connect the output of our lerp node to the base color on our fragment. After that, save your shader and go back into Unity. Navigate to your shader graph, right click on it and create a new material. I'm just gonna keep the default name here, then go to your lighting environment settings, and now we can just drag and drop our new material into the skybox material. Okay, let's go into play mode and check it out. You can see that as expected, it's oscillating between night and day, but there's definitely a few issues. First of all, it's way too fast, and it would be nice if we created a control for that. And second, there's this weird shadow texturing creeping in. Let's go back into shader graph and I'll explain how to fix those. But real quick, before we do that, if you are a dedicated game dev, I invite you to join my Discord. I am always active, answering your questions, and I also invite you to share any of your games or tips there so we can become a strong community of game devs. 
If you don't want to join but still want to help me, just leave a quick like on this video so more game devs can get recommended these tutorials. So I'm actually going to delete the lerp node. I just wanted to show that for demonstrational purposes because it's simple to understand. I'm also deleting the type node here and reorganizing. We need to create a more complex shader to get the desired effect. Let's start with a time node and then I'm going to make a time scale property to control how long the day and night cycles last. Let's create a multiply node and multiply the time output with the time scale property. Make sure you're using the time output, not the sign time like we did before. Connect the multiply output to a triangle wave where we can see the preview of our output as an oscillating black and white texture. To prevent the shadowing we saw, we need to clamp our values between 0 and 1, so create a clamp node and connect the output of the triangle wave to the input. Finally, we multiply the cube map day output with the clamped output. The result is a material showing the day skybox for half the period exactly what we wanted. Now we need to do the same for the other cube map except we need it to negate negate the output so it's the opposite of the day skybox. We create a negate node and connect the triangle wave node to it, then connect this to a clamp node where the min is 0 and the max is 1 again. Now let's multiply our skybox dark cube map with the output of the clamp node, and awesome! We now have our two skyboxes oscillating opposite to each other. Finally, we simply add them together with an add node, then connect this to our base color. Alright, let's go check out the new shader in Unity. As you can see in play mode, the blending looks much cleaner, but it's definitely way too fast. Luckily, we added a property to control that, so go to your material and adjust the time scale. I'll set mine to 0.2 for testing purposes, but for a real game, you'd obviously want this to be much lower. Okay, setting it slower looks a lot better, but is actually showing another issue with our shader. The first skybox completely fades out before the second one starts to fade in, so we need to somehow actually blend them together. Let's head back into shader graph one more time to add this. This will be a really easy fix, we just need to add in an add node between the triangle wave and the clamp node. So we connect the triangle wave output to the add input B, then for input A, we need to create a new property. Let's make the property named blend value and I'll give it a default value of 0.2. Now we drag on the blend value and connect it to our add node. And I'm going to do just the exact same thing on the bottom side. I'll speed it up real quick so we can get through this. Okay, let's go back into Unity and I'm going to fine tune a couple of these values and I'll see you in the final demonstration. As always, if you guys can like and subscribe, that would help a huge amount. I hope you enjoyed that day and night cycle tutorial. I'll be extending this with more in the future, so make sure to drop a comment below with the features you'd like me to add. See you next time. Peace.